This meeting shall come to order at 7 o'clock, December 2nd, 2015. Councilman Jackson, will you please lead us in the invocation? Dear Lord, during this glorious time of the year, I'd like to thank you for health. We'd like to pray for the people who are sick. We thank you for our wealth, but we pray for the poor. We pray for the people who keep us sick, I mean safe. But we pray for the people who are in harm's way. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us over the year. Thank you for what you want to do in the future. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Would you call the roll, please? Adam. Here. Joan. Here. Sephiroth. Here. Jackson. Here. Brownman. Here. Kojanski. Here. Agee. Here. Albers. Here. There is no addendum this evening, uh, but we do have minutes. And I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of uh, November 18, 2015. So moved. Second. All the roll, please. Adams. Yes. Jones. Yes. Separati. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Brownlee. Yes. Kojansky? Yes. Agee? Yes. Do we have any communications this evening? Yes. One from the State of Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Notice regarding newly enacted Ohio Revised Code Section 4301.83, waiver to serve alcohol at a major event, effective September 29, 2015. Thank you. There are no committee reports this evening, so we will go directly to our departments. Uh, Fire Department Chief Mark Cavalinas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Fire Department calls the data are 4,614. Fire Department's warrant five new cadets on this past Tuesday. One that will re replace a firefighter we lost due to resignation, and four that are part of the SAFER grant. We hope to complete the processing of additional two cadets this week. They will be the remaining firefighters hired under the SAFER grant. Guys Construction will be utilizing a helicopter to place cooling units on the roof of 17,000 Rockside as part of the Fannie Mae rebuilding project tomorrow. Starting at 10 a.m., we may have some traffic issues in and around the area. Come on, let's report. Thank you. Law Department, Mr. Montello. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to go over, uh, I got here a little late, the 2015-66, Rita did contact us and and did give their approval uh, for the way uh, we uh, have the uh, uh, ordinance draft now. As far as 2015-72 goes, I think there's some confusion. I think that Mr. Mellon, I did speak to him today, and he is expecting a resolution one way or the other on this uh, resolution. The only reason we would go to the free trial would be to, if it, uh, if it fails, if it passes, it's over. So uh, I think we'd like a resolution myself. Thank you, John. Police Department, we have Captain Hanson. Thank you. Uh, Police Department has 22,818 calls for service this year so far. Uh, slightly over 1,000 since the last meeting. Uh, we're actively in the recruiting process for officers since we're down from our authorized strength and uh, all is well otherwise. Thank you. Uh, Human Services, Mrs. Gopat. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a, a couple notes. This uh, past month we had visitors here at the Senior Center from Obama Elementary. Uh, it's a group of, uh, of children, uh, I think six or seven, that are called uh, Destination Imagination. Uh, the teacher actually has them work on a project where they go into the community to, to do some, uh, uh, some volunteer work. Uh, but they have to set up the whole the whole program. So they called, and they actually had a conference call with me, and talked about what they could do here and how we could they, they could work out. So they they were here the Friday after Thanksgiving, 
They were just delightful. They were, they were very, very hard. They did everything from serving lunch to the seniors to cleaning the trays, washing the tables. Uh, in the, they washed the trays in the kitchen. And um, I received a phone call yesterday that they had such a good time that they would like to come back a few more times this winter. So um, we'll have another call, and uh, they're going to set some dates with me. Also today, um, the, uh, I, I understand also that the National Honor Society will be returning to the Senior Center. They too were here to do a uh, volunteer project uh, probably about a month and a half ago. And they will be returning uh, to do a couple things for us in December, and we really appreciate that. So uh, it, gives, it, it gives the seniors an opportunity to meet with the young people in the community and build relationships. and and uh, bridges instead of anything else. So they, it, it was very, both, both, we're looking forward to both of their visits uh, coming up in December. Other than that, I don't have any report except to tell you those lovely ladies sitting at the back table. Um, the Maple Heights Senior Site Council <coughs> raises money to help the Senior Center. They had a treasury of over $6,000, but during this past year, used a number of those funds to help us pay bills, repair bills on the vans, and a number of things that we had to do. So they're trying to, they're down to under $1,000, and so they're trying to replenish their funds. So there's a raffle for uh, some Afghans that would make wonderful uh, Christmas presents, and also a Peterson nut sale. And former Councilman Joe Shumsky called me, and with that event, if we raise the First Catholic Lady Slovak Association will match up to $600 everything we make. So uh, stop by, make good Christmas presents. They will be delivered before Christmas. Thank you, end of report. Thank you, Mrs. Gopat. If uh, we have any residents uh, who would like to step up to the podium and uh, share some thoughts, you will have, uh, you're welcome to do so. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tanya Black, 21414, Hill Road. Uh, I just wanted to come up and speak on the one item on the agenda that had to do with the changing of the ordinance to not do any inspection of inside the homes for um, the um, before selling them. I am a product of that issue when it was in place before. And to me, the sellers are getting away with a lot of destruction in the house before it's being sold. And the cover-up is bad to the point of the house being destructed inside. The foundation alone is, is a good cover up for them to be able to sell the house and um, you have to uh, come up with a lot of money to replace a lot of things in that household. I am so, uh, surely against this passing because it is very bad for the um, person who was trying to buy the home and coming up with a lot of money to replace everything that needs to be fixed when they didn't plan on that in the first place. It's better to have that information before buying the home to know what they're going into. I also am a member of the Lions Club, the Maple Heights chapter, and I also wanted to bring to everybody's attention we are doing our annual uh, shoebox drive. So if anybody is interested in donating, we would gladly take anything that you have. Thank you. Moving along to the legislation, please. Okay. Ordinance number 2015-66. An ordinance enacting Chapter 891 of the codified ordinances of the City of Maple Heights regarding municipal income tax for the tax years commencing January 1, 2016, and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion for adoption, please? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? 
Madam Chair. Yes, Mayor. Point of uh, clarification from someone, anyone. Uh, reading number four. I, I can find nowhere in our charter or codified where we have four readings. We reference three readings, but should this not have been removed and reintroduced or you know, I, I don't want to see us going down the wrong road here doing something wrong. I, I've been doing this a long time, 24 years, I don't ever recall a fourth reading on a, any piece of legislation. Somebody clarify this for me? Go ahead, John. I mean, you have to have at least three readings. The, the, we could have tabled it, it was another option, but the fourth reading, there's nothing illegal about it. It, it says you have to pass at least, uh, you have to give an ordinance three readings unless there's an emergency. There's nothing saying you have to give a fourth reading. So rather than table it and have to remove it from the table, which we would have done had we tabled it, we just gave it a, uh, a third reading, but not a fourth reading. I think the uh, the whole issue was very minor. It was a minor yeah. clarification for uh, just a couple of details from Rita. So yes. Would would not it have been better amended on the third reading and voted on two weeks ago? Then if that's the case. Right. We didn't get the answer till today. Oh, yeah. From yes, from Rita. They had to, they wanted to review it prior to our passing to make sure it was acceptable. So. They, uh, they gave us their standing approval, so uh, it's good to go. Okay, so let's call the roll for adoption, please. Jackson? Yes. Brownlee? Yes. Trojanski? Yes. Agee? Yes. Adams? Yes. Jones? Yes. Separati? No. Passed by the vote, seven to one. Six, Six to one. one. Resolution number 2015-72, a resolution authorizing settlement of state ex well John Chapman and Councilman William Brownlee versus the City of Maple Heights, Ohio et al. Cuyahoga County case number CV 15839493 and declaring an emergency. This resolution is on its third reading. May I have a motion for adoption this evening? Second. Is there any discussion? Call the roll. Jackson? No. Brownlee? Abstain. Kojanski? No. Agee? No. Adams? No. Jones? No. Separati? No. Fails by the vote of six, seven, six, six to one abstention. One abstention. Madam, Madam Chair, there is a, a point of order. Uh, the, the person who makes the motion cannot then vote against the motion. It is. It is. It is correct. Yeah. I don't believe so. The the person who seconds is allowed to vote against it, but the person who actually moves the motion cannot then vote against the motion. I have never seen that in in these. No. Well, do you want to go back? Shall we go back and do this all over again? That's fine. I have the reconsider. We're going to withdraw everything. Reconsider. Or stand by your vote. I don't see a problem. All right, well, the, the legislation failed. And that's it. So it was never moved in the first place? I made the motion. I could withdraw and we still win. Five. That'd be five votes. All right. So, Madam President, I withdraw my draw my vote. And I abstain on it. I, I'm sorry, according to uh, procedure, Robert's rules, one who, who moves the motion has to vote in the affirmative. It's required. Are you serious? I, I am serious. It is required. I'm not aware of that rule, Your Honor. 
It's, it's can, you, a, can you point it out? Do you have it with if you? If I had it with me, I'd point it out, but I didn't realize we were going to have someone move for something they weren't planning to vote for. That doesn't even make sense. Uh, it just it seems to me that anybody can move for the for the uh, idea to to place it and, and move it on. It's commonly done. I, 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 no I don't understand what the problem is. If just I'm just telling you what Robert's rule states. All right. If you don't want to abide by that, then I guess you can do that. I'm just telling you what it says. Let's just go with the both way it stands. It's still four. It's still no, six zero. Six zero. Six zero. Well, That's even if if um, if Councilman Adams uh, votes affirmatively, it's still yeah. four. I would just stay four with the six zero. I don't think you need to read. We have another one. Okay. Let's, let's move on. In that case. 2015-79, please. Resolution number 2015-79. A resolution establishing a separate fund, fund number 240, for the allocation of the funds received from the Senior Center Levy passed on November 3rd, 2015, and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion to suspend the rules and place this resolution on its third and final reading. So moved. Second. Sorry, the second was? Councilman Jackson. Is there any discussion? Call the roll to suspend, please. Jackson. Yes. Brownlee. Yes. Kojanski. Yes. Agee. Yes. Adams. Jones. Yes. Separati. Yes. May I have a motion for adoption? Second. Is there any further discussion? Call the roll to the Jackson. Yes. Brownlee. Yes. Kojanski. Yes. Agee. Yes. Adams. Yes. Jones. Yes. Zeparati. Yes. Passed as an emergency by the vote of seven, seven to nothing. Seven to zero. Resolution number 2015 A. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with James G. Zupka, CPA Incorporated, Zupka, to compile the basic financial statements for the City of Maple Heights with years ending December 31st, 2015, December 31st, 2016, December 31st, 2017, and December 31st, 2018, and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion to suspend the rules and place this on its third and final reading? So moved. A second, please. Second. Is there any discussion? Call the roll to suspend. Jackson. Yes. Brownlee. Yes. Kojansky. Yes. Agee. Yes. Adams. Yes. Jones. Yes. Separati. Yes. May I have a motion for adoption? Second. Any discussion, please? Call the roll for Jackson. Yes. Brownlee. Yes. Kojanski. Yes. Agee. Yes. Adams. <coughs> Jones. Yes. Separati. Yes. Pass as an emergency by the vote seven to zero. Ordinance number 2015-81, an ordinance amending chapter 1494, restricting point of sale inspections to only the exterior portions of private property in the city of Maple Heights. This ordinance is on its first reading. Madam Chair. Councilman Rowan. Yes, I'd just like to make a couple of comments regarding uh, this piece of legislation that uh, pertains to the points of sale uh, inspections that the city currently conducts. Uh, as it can be seen in the uh, whereas statements, um, primarily, uh, maybe foremost, is that the current point of sale inspection system uh, requires that property owners open up the uh, personal areas of their property to an inspection and there's no way around that. There's no warrant gain for that personal that inspection of personal space. And as such, it is in violation of the Fourth Amendment, which uh, says the government cannot search your property without a warrant. 
which effectively is what an interior point of sale inspection is. It's a required inspection that cannot be denied that permits access or gives access to uh, government officials to your personal areas of your property. Um, but also, even beyond that, I think what makes it even more important for the city of Maple Heights is that these uh, point of sale inspections in general, but more specifically the interior uh, point of sale part of the inspection, causes a, a large amount of uncertainty with prospective buyers and even some uh, trepidation on the part of sellers because you can have a perfectly livable property, yet the government of Maple Heights can come in and say, hey, I think you need to replace this light switch or this outlet or this light fixture, or you need to paint your ceiling. And that obviously comes at a cost. And you never know what you're going to get until the, gov the, the government official comes and tells you what you have to do. So this causes a lot of um, fear or uh, makes the prospective buyer have to assume a lot of risk, saying, I'm not sure what I'm getting into. Four years ago, we bought our property across the street. We had to go through this process ourselves, my wife and I, and there were a lot of things we had to fix that really had nothing to do with safety, had nothing to do even with livability of the property that we were required to spend money to have a contractor address simply because a government official said that I should. It didn't impinge upon anyone else's safety or, or even their quality of life. Nonetheless, I had to paint this or replace that within the interior of my home. Uh, this is not, I think, a profitable uh, way to um, operate. It's causing a lot of fear and the good folks who want to follow the rules are finding that it's really difficult to do so. Almost Councilman impossible. Brownlee, Councilman, I hate to interrupt you, but the, the discussion that you're, uh, you're having right now is, is probably a little out of order because we haven't uh, had a motion for discussion. But if you'd like to move this to committee, as you uh, noted in caucus, I think now might be the appropriate time to do it. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just finish my comment. So I believe that um, it's actually in the best interest of the city to lift this burden because there are good investors. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are good investors, not just investors, but people who want to buy a home here in Maple Heights who may not be able to do so because they're not sure what they're going to get whenever this inspection comes along. So I think there are two very important considerations as we look at this resolution and how we do our point of sale inspections here in Maple Heights. And I would ask that we would consider those things uh, honestly and openly as we move forward, because I think it's very important for our city, not only to be in compliance with the U.S. Constitution, but also to be opening up our uh, property to be able to move freely, to be sold and bought freely, so that we can begin to recover from the uh, depression that we've been facing on our property values. Thank you. As we mentioned previously, this is going to be moved to committee for consideration with the appropriate uh, officials. No, Madam Chair, it's not true. What's not true, Mr. This President? is on first reading. It was not being moved to committee at this point in time. It was my understanding at caucus that that was going to be moved to committee for further discussion? At one point in time during caucus, yes, but that was changed at the end of the discussion. That doesn't matter even anyway. I'm not moving it to committee at this point in time. Moving to expenditures so, over. President, I'd like to speak on that. Well, I thought you too was going to put that into committee. He has to say the questions. <laughs> Madam Chair, are you entertaining any other discussion on this issue? Well, it's, if, if we wanted to, uh, it's on it's on first reading, if we want to uh, have a motion to suspend the rules and place it on a third and final reading, we could begin the discussion. Would you like to do that? Yes. Yes? Yes. 
Well, let's go ahead and do that then. May I have a motion to say if you don't want to move it to committee, Mr. Brownlee, as you mentioned in caucus, uh, for in discussion with the appropriate authorities, like the building department, um, then I would suggest that we move to suspend the rules and place it on a third, its third and final reading. Council, council's free to do whatever it pleases if they okay, want to do may I have a motion? Second. Second. Now, is there any discussion? Madam Chair. On the suspension? Yes, Mr. Jackson. Um, after listening to my colleague talk about the Fourth Amendment and search and seizure, um, when a housing inspection happens, I don't think our building inspectors are going in the house opening drawers, looking in closets, underneath mattresses, which I would think would be searching the place. What they're looking for, what they're searching for, are violations. And yes, a light switch can be bad. A GFI cannot be hooked up right. Um, we can have electrical panels that's not up to code. There's a lot of safety issues involved with inspections. <coughs> Um, another thing, our housing stock is probably the most important thing that we have in the city, and it needs to be maintained at the highest standard. Um, therefore, the interior inspection is very, very important. That's all, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he had asked. He had asked to speak. Councilman Adams. I disagree with this ordinance for my District 1 in the city of Maple Heights. Uh, as we said, the number one is the housing stock. We want to keep our neighborhoods up. And we don't want landlords or sellers selling houses that are not in compliance with our codes. I don't believe that it's covered by the Fourth Amendment. And if it is, I would ask our law department to challenge it at the Ohio Supreme Court under home rule. Uh, we don't want uh, single parents or anybody else moving into a home and it catches fire and might be a liability to the city and it doesn't look good. And if y'all was reading the plain dealer on the lead paint and how many houses that has not been checked, and one of the things we do is check for lead paint, which is very toxic to children. And that's one of the things that these ordinance covers plus the switches and the plumbing and everything else. We had people, and I think Mr. Jackson spoke, that a resident called and moved into the house and didn't even have a furnace. That's how bad things are. And that's why we need an ordinance as we go. Yeah. Councilman Jones, you have a Madam Chair, I requested this ordinance to be put into committee, which hopefully will still be my committee in the next year, when who knows, in order to have us discuss all the ramifications of the point of sale inspection and not to react to this as a knee-jerk reaction. But there's, there's other things to consider. There's things to consider, such as having just maybe a, a safety point of sale to do the inside, smoke detectors, electrical plumbing, roofing, whatever we need to have. I think for us to pass this just as the threat because it violates the Fourth Amendment, and I think if you're looking to start a class action lawsuit against 59 other municipalities in Cuyahoga County where the majority of these have point of sale inspections, maybe you really need to put your kids through college or something, but you're not going to do it on our dime. I'm asking to please have this put in our committee so we can discuss this rationally and not have a three time vote in order for something like this to be shoved down our throat when we don't talk to the building commission and we don't talk to the police chief, we don't talk to realtors, we don't talk to investors, and we don't even have a public forum on it for the residents to say anything. And you're the first person that would talk about having a public forum. Well, I'm not voting for this. 
could we possibly have a, um, if there's no more discussion, could we have a role to suspend the rules? Madam, Madam Chair, I would like to speak at this point in time. I have called for a roll. Can you wait just a moment, please? Of course. Would you call the roll? Jackson. Suspend. To suspend. suspend. To suspend. Yes. Yes. Okay. Brownlee. No. Wojanski. Yes. Agee. Yes. Adams. Yes. Jones. Yes. Sephardi. Yes. Now may I have a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Watch out, because you can't vote no. You can't vote no. Remember, you can't vote no. No, you don't need to be saying that. You can't vote no. Okay, the second place. It's good for the one ordinance, it's good for this ordinance too, right, Bill? Put me in jail. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes, Matt Jim. Councilman Bromley? <clears throat> I find it. Uh, I find the discussion here tonight rather I ironic. I've <clears throat> uh, stated multiple times uh, right now and in caucus examples of how someone in the recent past is moving into a property without the proper plumbing or without the the furnace, and we have interior point of sale inspection so obviously they aren't doing that well are they all the things you're talking about supposedly catching you just mentioned tonight are already slipping through the cracks so perhaps the intent is not being achieved by the laws that we have on the books right now the attempt is to keep up property values with these interior point of sale inspections yet that is not what we are seeing happen just because we intend something to happen doesn't mean that it actually happens when we pass a rule in line with that intent therefore we need to consider if there are actually other avenues to achieve the result of maintaining our property values because we all have the stories to tell of the property that is just a shame on our street or on our block. And the interior point of sale, the point of sale system as it stands right now is not fixing that. So this vehement defense of the status quo I find to be rather ironic. And the claim that we shouldn't have to vote on this right now, I find it re very ironic as well, because how many did we vote on tonight that we received five days ago? There was no demand that we wait and consider this legislation more for those ones. It's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, some people say. Yet, I find it ironic that for one resolution, we say we should treat it this way, for another resolution, I say it's completely different. We don't see the irony in that. I, as you can attest tonight, and the record was shown, never moved to vote on this tonight. It was actually done by others. So I find that ironic as well. We can consider this motion or this resolution further, but if you vote on it, there will be no opportunity to consider it more. Madam Chair, I'm certain the new administration, uh, the mayor and the new administration, are, are going to address some of these issues. I, I'm 100% sure of that. I mean, so there will be opportunity to discuss this at a later date. I don't think it's a, an appropriate time, and I don't believe it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment, right? I mean, state uh, dictates the codes that we're, we're manually to follow. I think it's a bad idea, but I think you should vote on it tonight, one way or the other, and be done with it, and then we'll, I'm certain the new administration will deal with making uh, the building department uh, a little more e friendly, uh, user friendly, and uh, I, I, I know that's one of the goals of the new administration. So let's give them an opportunity rather than just. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Montel. Uh, this uh, has, has caused a, a lot of uh, 
uh, comment, and there's some uh, pros and cons. And I, I think that uh, moving it to a committee would have been a, an ideal situation, and I'm sure that's where it should end up e eventually, uh, along with anyone else who is uh, interested in this uh, in the uh, uh, building department. But uh, at this point in time, I'm going to call for adoption. <coughs> Jackson. No. Brownlee. Yes. Kojanski. No. Agee. No. Adams. No. Jones. No. Separati. No. Fails by the vote of six to one.